the most lethal animal that we have ever filmed, yeah. featured. Even we've, we we did a big, big snake, right? What was the it's big Burmese. snake? Burmese. Burmese. I'm sure that Burmese has killed people. You're saying less? It's probably happened. You're saying less people than a black widow? Yeah. Okay. Black widows don't kill people very often, but that Burmese pythons almost never i mean they can they have, they have the capacity but like you better believe it's nationwide news whenever it happens here you know it would probably be in asia when it happens that would be the ones you hear about less but it's usually retics that are killing people in the wild berms don't get quite as big okay so we talked about the mating rituals of mm -hmm. the Black Widow Spider. <laughs> uh, I, got, I got a number of questions. About that one. Uh, so the male, he reaches back, grabs the sperm packet. Sperm packet from his pedipalp. With his pedipalp. With his pedipalp. What's, what's the two butt things? Spinnerets. Spinnerets. Little butt okay. things. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Uh, his so it doesn't come his, out of the spinnerets. His, his pedipalp is his mouth. No, so. It, so he's got a mouth, and then he's got the chelicerae, which are the fangs. Chelicerae, that's what I was saying. And then he's got the pedipalps, which are feeding assistance appendages. Okay. Um, in tarantulas, they are almost leg size. So they look like extra legs. On black widows, they're much smaller. But when you see a spider on your wall, if it's got what looks like the front pair of legs have these big bulbs at the end, that's a male. Okay. Yeah. And hold on, hold on. He, he, he stores the sperm packets in those always bowls. on the front. Yep, and those Ready bowls. to go. He doesn't produce the sperm there. He produces the sperm in his testes, but then he... Go on. <laughs> That's the end of the story. No, no, no. What, how does he move them from... I'm actually not sure quite what the procedure is for loading up the pedipalps, <laughs> but he loads those bad boys. <laughs> okay. Okay. They are loaded. Yeah. And then he, he gingerly approaches yep. the female. Tickle, tickle, tickle. I'm not a fly. Uh, he, 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 he tickles the web. Yes. He gingerly approaches her with his pedipalps, places it where it needs to be placed. Indeed. And then runs away. Like crazy. Uh, okay, so... Now, and let me tell you another thing. And I, I, I was going to talk about this in the video, but I can't substantiate it. I don't know. I don't know for sure this is true, but it is my understanding that some species of black widows have differential levels of desire to get away. So as I understand it, the Australian redback black widow, the Australian red black, redback spider, the males, after inserting the sperm packet, just thrust themselves into her chelicerae to be eaten. What? Like a sacrifice? Like a sacrifice. And it's called t babies. terminal investment for his babies because uh, you know and this would speak volumes about the likelihood of him ever being to mate again you know, well of course it goes down once he's eaten been eaten but males that ran off still probably never got to meet again or mate again because there probably just aren't that many females around low density and so the ones that just stuck around and got eaten their females were more likely to produce more eggs and survive and so they had the better fitness than the ones that ran off and died alone in the corner Whereas, you know, the male black widows here, you know, that run away, that is probably an indicator that, at least historically, it has been better as a male black widow to get away because your chances of mating again are decent. And it's, it's better to have two matings that are less than perfect because she doesn't get a good meal than one mating that is perfect because she gets a good meal but you're now dead. That's, base, that's because of the low density of potential mates. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The it's going to have a ton to do with the likelihood of mating a second time. Okay, so I get why humans like to mate. I get it. Mm -hmm. Do you? It, it's fun. <laughs> Is it? Why does a black widow want to mate? I don't get that. It doesn't seem like that would be a fun venture. Okay. I know, I know they're predetermined. You know, it's, it's evolutionary. They're, I get that. Kind of, but at the same time... Imagine, imagine if you will, though, that you had to sit down with an asexually reproducing space alien and explain to them why you enjoy coitus. 
It's yay fun. That's what I would say. Yeah, you'd be like, okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> um, first off, you're gonna spend a ton of money and time trying to impress someone, another member of your species, who carries who knows what diseases. All right. Um, you're gonna, <laughs> you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get around them a lot. Um, but potentially have to fight with other competitors for access to that person. And then after spending who knows how much time and money and effort, you will finally get them to accept you into their world, at which point you can expose everything that you hold most sacred about yourself <laughs> to that person and hope that you are not rejected at this moment when they see really all the things you've been concealing all this time. <laughs> Then, then, you hope that, that you can have a weird and messy experience with them. <laughs> that you can only describe to this space alien as makes you feel good and gives your brain a dose of stuff that is akin to what you get from drugs. <laughs> then you hope, possibly, y you have one of two goals. You're either hoping that you make another person, which they can do, all by themselves, or B, that you don't make a person because all you wanted was, after all that work was just that dose of chemicals that you could have received just from doing a little cocaine. Uh, yeah. This, this is what you have to explain to them. And they're gonna look at you just like you're looking at the male black widow, like what the heck? Okay, does Are he you get, even thinking? Does he get the dopamine? Almost get... certainly, right? And he he is probably totally unaware of the fact that he might get eaten here in a minute, right? That's not in the calculation. He is just driven he's, by he's the got same one-track mind. Yep, he's driven by the same difficult to explain motivations <laughs> that motivated you through all this, all these steps, all the way up to that point, because his ancestors that weren't so motivated, well, they were, weren't his ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you there's you think he's getting a high essentially well he, he he's definitely there's some sort of payoff <laughs> some sort of payoff right like he is he is being motivated somehow to do these activities mm -hmm. whether or not he's aware why he's doing these activities or what the risks are right but he knows to get away maybe you know, it, 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 that's also something that has probably been selected upon for a long time because the males that got the heck out of there, they made it again, and so their genes are really well represented. You know, he might not be like, I bet she's going to eat me. He's just like, all right, this is the point where I run away. Hmm. Right? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never, I have n never ever explained that before in my <laughs> life. <laughs> like that, that, is, that is the first time I've ever had that particular conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do not let my wife <laughs> hear about this conversation. <laughs> so I did look up how male spiders um, apply their sperm to the females, and it says that male spiders make some silk, put sperm onto the silk, and then put their pedipalps into the sperm. The pedipalps then hold the sperm, and the spider can use it to mate with the female by putting them inside her epigenome. And then you get the heck out of there. You get the heck out of there. Make a mad dash. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. Yeah. Because I got a lot still. Uh, the male is small. Mm -hmm. I kind of think like, hey, if he were big, bigger than the female, maybe he could fight off the female. Absolutely. Be like, hey, 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 don't you dare try to eat me because I have a certain set of skills. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. It would, not. it would vastly improve his probability of surviving the encounter. But it would vastly reduce his probability of ever surviving to get to the encounter. Because, because he'd have to live a long time mm. to get that big. Whereas he doesn't need to live very long at all to get to breeding size for a spider now. And so his chance of ever getting that encounter is way higher. But the female <laughs> wants to get that big. So, female doesn't need to get that big, but if, if she matures young, she's going to produce just a, a handful of eggs, right? Or they're going to be real tiny, which also stinks. Mm -hmm. If she gets huge, you know, volume grows, 
at a, at a cubic rate, right? And so she is going to be able to produce so many more babies that even, you know, say she only has a third the chance of getting that big, but she has 30 times as many babies. Well, that's going to be the strategy that's going to win out over time are the ones that hold off. And it's not like they're thinking this out, but the ones that matured late and got huge, they're the ones that produce just a, what's called a crap ton of babies. It's a metric unit. Metric. Do the males have the hourglass as well? They kind of do, but it's not as... Def they've got a lot of pattern going on, and, and so it's kind of on there, but males aren't dangerously venomous either. I've rarely seen them, because the truth is, the female has to live a long time. The males don't live very long. I mean, they're, they're only going to go through a few molts, and they're going to be big enough, they're going to mate, and then they're done. And so the, the, the number of females, the females are bigger and more conspicuous, and they live a lot longer, so the number of females alive at any one time is a lot higher than the number of males. Are you going to talk about how the juveniles, before they molt to black, look a lot like the males and have the tan with the white? Sometimes. Well, before they molt to black, when they're really little. But I've got a juvenile with me right now, and the main, and we did talk about this already, but the main, the main really distinctive thing about the juveniles is the red stripe up their abdomen, but there's so much variation in, in the different species around the world that I don't want to get into too much detail. Mm. Sexual dimorphism. We've talked about the size. Why would color be oh. so... So different. different between the same species or whatever between a male and a female. Well, one of the big things, and this is this really goes to what Michelle was just saying about the fact that when they're young, they've got coloration much more like the males, is the fact that when you are dramatically different in size, you probably live in a different way. You know, the great big female lives in a different way than the male, and so there are different selective pressures on males than there are on females. And the females too, when they're young, have got very similar selective pressures to the males all their lives. And so they look about the same as the males do, but when they get big, they're living in a, in a different environment and Interesting. different look. Anti-venom. I imagine that would be crazy expensive stuff. Yeah, it's expensive. It's thousands of dollars of vial a lot of the time. Yeah. I don't think it lasts very long. No, it, it's got a fairly short shelf life, maybe a couple of years. Uh, Clint, how many abandoned bathrooms have you taken a squat on? Uh, I'm very careful about squats in abandoned bathrooms. <laughs> the true truth is, like, when you grow up going on hikes in the mountains and stuff. See, okay, Utah's funny. The first time I went camping in Utah... We went up to the mountains and camped in a tent on a mowed Kentucky bluegrass field. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is That's happening here? Kentucky. Yeah, no, there there were bathrooms that made flush sounds <laughs> and running water for to wash your hands. There was a shelter with the fireplace in it. I'd never been camping like that in my life. Like, in Colorado, it's a little bit more work to get into the mountains. Because, you know, they're not just... Like, because the mountains are much bigger, and there are small mountains in front of the big mountains, and you go to the big mountains, and so you got to drive through the small mountains, and you're kind of out in the boondies a lot, the more. And when you find, if there's a bathroom at all, it's like a weirdy dark outhouse mm -hmm. that maybe hasn't been used in quite some time. And black widows like humid, quiet, dark places, like down in an old, barely used outhouse. <laughs> and, and so, you know, they might be kind of down in there or even up in the toilet seat area and stuff, and so you, you squat with caution. Squat with caution. What is this capsule thing that you've got the other... No. Oh. I, I feel like... This is... Kevin always gives me stuff in these. <laughs> this what is, is that? This is a centrifuge tube. <laughs> okay. So they're lovely for when you're out in the field and you want to catch stuff, because mm -hmm. you can just stuff a bunch of these in your pocket, and, uh, you know... Uh, 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 an endothermic organism like a bird or a mammal wouldn't live very long in a tube like this. But these guys, because they're not burning energy to heat their bodies, their oxygen needs are really, really low. And so, you know, if you want to be super careful, you can poke a hole in this vial, but then you risk that somehow the chelicerae get through there and get you. And so you can keep them in a vial like this 
for a long time as long as you open it every so often. This is not where I would long-term storage the spider, but he just gave gave her to me, so we'll we'll set her up in a fancy apartment like this later. <laughs> where uh, does he find them? <clears throat> at his house somewhere. Is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does he find a lot of them? I think they're in his garage. Uh -huh. <laughs> Generally, I would poke some holes in the bottom. Uh, if you're worried about the spider getting through, what you can do is you can poke some holes with a fork and then you can glue some paper towel down, you know, like a circle of paper towel down so that they don't get through too much. Um, but, you know, honestly, like if you open the jar to feed them and then open the jar maybe one other time a week. I've never, I have never had a black widow die of asphyxiation. Let's put it that way. Even when kept in centrifuge tubes for a while. How long's a while? I don't know, like a couple weeks? Mm. Maybe, you know, they, they build their little web in there and I'm catching flies on the ceiling with it. 